That's uh, what you hear a lot of people say when they ask you what their favorite uh, Leonard Skinner song is, along with Sweet Home Alabama. And uh, I Know a Little. I Know a Little is a pretty good one. Anyway, um, today we're going to be covering Free Bird, if you couldn't tell. And it's going to be one of those songs where it starts out real mellow, has a bit of a guitar melody in the beginning that kind of goes in and out of the major scale but then a mode also by just one note and that'll be explained in this video how that all works then also there's the big breakdown at the end of the song where everything speeds up and goes real fast and the solos get all crazy and everything to give you give the audience that big uh, big ultra finish and everything so there's gonna be a little bit of a, a theory rabbit trail here in the middle of the vid um, of the video excuse me and it's going to be talking about chord charting and what that entails. Um, it's a very important skill that I think every musician, regardless of what instrument they play, ought to learn. Um, and so we're going to be covering that as well. You're going to have the scales, because you know me, before I teach any part of a solo, um, I don't usually teach all of a solo. I tend to try to, at least not in these videos, I at least tend to try to give you the, the appropriate licks and the right steps that make it just you know knowable enough so that you can take it the rest of the way and then I also always try to put the scales in first um, so that you can see what patterns that the solos are using so that you're not just playing blindly on the fretboard and everything very important skills for every guitar player to to learn you know whenever they are uh, learning a new song so that's coming down the pike here today uh, hope you enjoy what you're about to see um. The main melody in Freebird, um, it seems, it sounds to me anyway when I listen to it and when I've seen anybody else play it, they stay pretty much on the tenth position of the guitar, so all the way up there on the tenth fret. So I'm about to show you the scales that uh, they use in that, and that's the G major scale starting in the tenth position, uh, fifth string, tenth fret, and also the G mixolydian scale because there's an F that gets thrown in there. So when you're playing in G major you're you're playing G A B C D uh, E F sharp but in G mixolydian that F sharp becomes just an F so I'm going to show you the the difference in those two scales and then I'm also going to show you the the melody itself right afterwards I don't have a slide um, shame on me um, but uh, I do have pretty decent bend skills and slide skills with my bare hands so I guess you can I guess that'll count for something but either way you'll get to see what the frets are that are being used in the main melody so you can take it and go with it wherever you want to so all right I'll shut up now <laughs> Thank you. 
just a quick word about the ending on this. You could either move up, it depends on whatever you find to be easier. You can bend up to the D note from the fourth uh, string, 10th fret, for that very last point, or you could move up to the fifth fret of the third string. And honestly, I like that one better. It feels better for me. But uh, just wanted to leave that up to you guys. Okay. So I wanted to say uh, a little something about uh, chord charts or chord charting. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, there's times in every musician's life, or at least guitar player, piano player, bass player, I guess drummer, uh, too. I don't want to leave them out, you know. But there comes a time where you have to chart out what the song you're doing, you know, where where what are each of the chords about to be doing? What are the, how are they moving and things like that? And that's where this idea of chord charts comes from. Um, in college, you learn about these in a much more grandiose way, like you learn how to use Roman, Roman numerals to uh, make chord charts and things like that. Other people just use basic numbers. Um, but the idea is, is first you take your scale, and in this case, that's the G major scale, G, A, B, D, C, uh, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and then G. And you basically uh, number each one. Now, in every single, we learned about how every single, you know, our chords come from our scales, basically. You know, where you take the first note of the, your scale, then the third note, and then the fifth note. In this case, that would be G, B, and D. You put those together. G, B, and D forms the G major triad. In other words, it's the those are the three notes that go into the G major chord. So whenever you play that on a guitar, those are actually the three notes you're playing. Well, if you were to take that same concept, that whole one, three, five concept, and just apply it to each of the different notes in your uh, scale. So for instance, say we go over to A next. Well, then you're going to have A, that's your 1, in this case now, because you're starting on the second note of the G major scale. Then you're going to skip over a note to C, skip over another note to E, the 1, 3, 5, A, C, and E, that's actually the A minor chord, or the A minor triad that you're spelling. So whenever you play an A minor chord on the guitar, that's what you're playing. Well, um, in this song, it uh, there's or let's just say in most songs there's several chords in every major key that you really want to pay attention to because they get used a lot especially in pop music or rock music or whatever that uses a lot of chords um, you know you have your obviously your your one which is in this case the G major chord then you have your four your four chord in this case that would be the C major chord and then your five that would be the D major chord the one the first chord of your scale, the fourth and the fifth chords of your scale are always major, typically. Your second, third, and sixth are always minor chords. And then your seventh note, which uh, sometimes gets used, not a whole lot though, is actually a diminished chord or a diminished triad. So when you're breaking down chord charts, one is major, two is minor, three is minor, four is major, five is major, six is minor, seven is diminished. Uh, I hope that didn't go over everybody's head too much, but it's it's definitely an important uh, skill to learn uh, when you're trying to learn songs on your own and you know when you're wanting to try to just see what you can figure out on your own first. Before you... In part three of Freebird, that's when it starts to break down and get real fast and everything, it even uh, changes key. So instead of being in G major, it goes into G minor. So that's going to bring about a totally different set of, uh, of a notes. It's going to be uh, G, A, B flat, and then C, D, uh, E flat, and then uh, F, 
NG. So there you go. Yeah, I got it off off of my head there like that. So I'll make sure to have that that scale down at the bottom for you too. But pretty much just follow what the riffs are doing as best you can. Um, there's a lot of palm muting in this bit. I kind of play it Metallica heavy metal style with the chords and everything. And then I'll have the the solos and the scales at the end of it as well, so that you'll have some something to work off of there. Okay. <laughs> So that was Freebird, everybody. Holy cow. I mean, just just think about it. it. It's a long song. I mean, I grew a beard, shaved it back off, and changed my clothes and everything. That's how long of a song this is, you know? Um, all in this one video. Uh, so thank you, everybody, for watching. I hope this was helpful for anybody who wants to learn this song. Um, whenever you learn a new song like this, make sure you're for your own personal kind of if, if for nothing else just for journaling you know just to kind of track your progress in your guitar playing or in your musical journey in life just uh keep tabs on how many huh, i made a joke there tabs anyway keep track of how many songs you've learned and i i challenge all of you to do this take take a list write down all the songs you've ever learned and don't just try not to be comfortable just learning parts of songs but try to learn every part of the song or all the main parts and everything like that and try to put the whole thing together and then write down on your list you know hey I learned how to do this song it will amaze you because um, what's what you're gonna see happen once you start doing that is you're gonna see a repertoire building and this you can actually take to other 
you know, say if you're inter interested in joining a band or you want to make yourself a more, uh, you know, um, a bigger asset in the music in industry, I suppose, is you just show people, hey, these are a list of songs I'm able to play. When do you want to start jamming? So it's a, it's a very, not only is it, a, it's very beneficial for you, I guess you could say spiritually, because it, you know, makes you realize just how far you've really come. But it also is good for you practically because you do actually have sort of a portfolio now of uh, songs that you're able to play. And keep it diverse. Don't just stick with one genre. Try to learn multiple genre. Um, so that's pretty much all I have for you today. I hope you found this helpful, like I said. Uh, if you liked what you saw, make sure to hit the like button. Make sure to subscribe. You can even find me on Facebook at JT Banks. And uh, I think it's just JT Banks. But anyway... Um, and then, yeah, that's pretty much it. Also, some other news coming. I'm kind of working on a little bit of a website here that I'm hoping to get coming up at some point in the future here. But uh, that'll be kind of a nice way to link all this, all this media that I'm putting together for everybody um, on one on one homepage. So that was Freebird. See you guys next time.